So what did you do after high school? What did you do after high school? I got a job uh, pasting labels on spools of ribbon <laughs> for $14 a week. How long did you do that? Uh, for close to a year. And then uh, Grandpa got me a job. Uh, but that only lasted about a month, I think, because this woman had this uh, business and I was working in the office and she had a boy working, a young man working the stockroom. And then she decided she didn't need both of us. I couldn't lift packages, but he could type or whatever he, so she fired me. And then I got a job, um, I don't remember where I started working, but uh, I got, a, uh, by that time I had taken stenography and typing because I hadn't taken that in high school. So uh, I got a job uh, typing secretary. I don't remember where I worked at that time, but uh, you when worked I started for a dress going to school at night. What? A dress manufacturer. Uh, Henry Rosenfeld, I'm trying to remember when I started working there. Um, I think about that I, for a second. I, I have think to I change worked someplace. Time out. Tropical fish house, wholesale. Yeah. Um, then I worked for <coughs> a dress uh, manufacturer. All right. You want to tell us about the tropical fish job? That's, that's a good yeah. story. Well, yeah. There were a lot of funny things that happened. Yeah. Uh, one time, <coughs> a bird. Um, they in, he imported a lot of stuff besides the tropical fish. He imported a bird once, and he was trying to get it. was in the summertime, and all the windows were open. We didn't have any air conditioning in those days. And uh, <clears throat> he wanted to put the take the bird out of the box and put it into the cage. But the cage door swung open, and the bird flew out. And he started yelling every to everybody, Close the windows, and he was jumping on the desk trying to grab the bird. Finally, got the bird, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. the, uh, uh, I don't know if you want to tell the Coney Island story. He lived in Yonkers. <clears throat> One day, he said he had a uh, delivery to make in Brooklyn. He would take me home. He took me home by way of Coney Island and made me go on the parachute jump with him because his wife wouldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your one and only time no, on the parachute No, no, I jump? went. I went once before that. <laughs> and, uh, those were my two times on the parachute jump. <laughs> what else? Uh, did you ever do the parachute, parachute jump? Yes, yeah. once. Yeah, you did. <laughs> with a boyfriend. <laughs> So, so that carried you through the basic, well, you graduated high school in 43? No, 42. 42. And, and you worked different jobs until yes. you got married? Yep. And so that, cut, that catches I, us back up to, I think, where we were with you in the late 40s. I got into the insurance get <coughs> business because Evelyn worked in a job, and that was when you were leaving to go up to Schenectady, right? Yeah. And she told me to take over her job because oh, so it was did. nine to five, and I was working nine to six, and I was working in Manhattan. This was in Brooklyn. I was going to Brooklyn College at night, so it was a big advantage to me to uh, work in Brooklyn till and she, five and o'clock. I was giving her a strange boss. He was a strange yeah. person. <laughs> so you were in Schenectady at that time. Let's see. I think we had. I think we were we had gotten up to Ruth just was being born, right? No, I was here a year before she was born. Right. Yeah. Okay, but that's where we were talking about yeah. before. Yeah, in Helen Street, we had just gotten the house on Helen Street. Oh, you had. Right. I was part of that. Right, and Arthur was still working for the chemical company then. Yeah, for Turco Products. Right. So how did it happen that he in, that he changed into the car wash business? What happened to the well, he had car wash customers, oh, and he was selling chemicals too, and um, that's how it happened. And 
it started to, the business started to grow. He started the business while he was still working for this company and they didn't want to let him go. So they allowed him to keep using their car and he was working on the um, What happened? Go ahead. Nothing. And um, so he was still working for them and using their car and starting his business, but he started it at home. Mm -hmm. So I was I was the one who was at home. So I handled all the paperwork that had to be done. And there were some phone calls, not too many. And um, and finally, he left the company, and um, and, then he, and that was it. Well, your, your original plan was to stay here for five years and go back. So at some point, you realized you made a commitment to staying here. What was that? I mean, was that right? I mean, that was that was our life. So so we stayed. Okay, and then uh, Laura was born. A couple of years later, and then Amy was born, and moved to Waverly Place at some point. Yeah, in 1963. In the meantime, you met Daddy in 53, 52? 52. Yeah, yeah. And, how did, and how did you meet him? My friend Grace went out with his friend and gave him two numbers. And he gave Daddy one and he gave Eddie the other. And I think they put them in a hat and Daddy put them in a hat. So you mean Daddy could have been married to that. Selma Levy? <laughs> now, Selma wasn't the other girl. Oh. <laughs> Else we want to talk about. Well, let's see. Well, you and so you were married in what year? Fifty-three. Fifty-three. And then is that when you moved to Long Island? No, the no. apartment in. Uh... I lived in Brooklyn. We lived in a. Uh, when we first got married, we didn't have an apartment. We lived in a uh, hotel, the Granada, in Brooklyn, Whoa. downtown Brooklyn, for about three weeks. We got the apartment. We lived in the apartment for four years. Is that where Artie was born? Yes, I Artie mean, and Alice. Okay, I remember Artie. Yeah, we had a one-bedroom apartment and two children. <laughs> 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 and then we moved to our house. <clears throat> we waited about an hour, a year and a half for that house to be built mm -hmm. from the time we bought it to the time we moved in. And by that time, I was pregnant with Lynn, but she was born in that house. We lived there for six years, and then we moved to uh, Baltimore, where we had Eric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, uh, just think, you, you know, and throughout the years, I know you traveled quite a bit. Yep. Your favorite, your favorite places that you visited. My favorite places. Places that you visited. Paris, London, well, all of the places we visited were favorite. Well, mention them. What, <laughs> what, what, the, what are the names of the Spain, countries? Spain, Portugal, um, Italy. It, uh, yeah. yeah, Venice. We went, that was one of my favorite places, Venice. We went, we went to Paris about three times, went to London about three times, because we traveled with <coughs> his army group, and um, he, could, he couldn't remember the places that he had been to in, when he was in the army. So he was very glad when we went on, when the, uh, his group had a uh, trip, because they took us to the places that he had been. We went to about 
10 countries in 18 days on one of the trips. Went on two of those trips. One place in Glitchenstein, we only spent an afternoon there. We had lunch there. <laughs> it's a small country. <laughs> yeah. And Mom, what about your, your travels over the years? I went to England and Israel and Israel. Holland. And Holland. I forgot about that. Canada. What? Canada. Uh, okay, Canada. That's <laughs> <laughs> another country. Hawaii. That's right, Hawaii. And Puerto Rico. I think that's it. No, some of the other islands in the Caribbean you went to, St. Thomas? Or, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And visiting Ruth in California. Yeah, I lived in California at one point. Right. Yeah, I also <coughs> visited Israel a couple of times with Joe, and then I I went, <coughs> after he died, I went there as a volunteer for three weeks. She was in the Israeli army. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was volunteering. <laughs> 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 yeah, we lived on an army base. And the, with the, um, the bathroom two buildings away. <laughs> <laughs> and it was cold water. Right. That's right. For the showers. No, I don't remember. We must I remember you went to the Mortensterns to take a hot shower. <laughs> you know, we wanted to touch on the Morgensterns because, you know, the Morgensterns, Rabbi and his wife were very good friends of Grandma and Grandpa, right? And they married... They married me. They married, they married all of us, right? So they, they married you too, yeah. right? They married Sima. And a lot of the cousins? Did they marry some of your cousins also? Oh, oh yes. probably the Reinhards. Yeah. I don't remember that. I mean, I, and I wonder they didn't, he didn't marry Mickey? I don't know. I would imagine so. We were at the Next, wedding. I don't remember the wedding. We, we arrived after the ceremony. I don't remember. You don't? Oh. On purpose? <laughs> what? On no, purpose. Yeah, it's on we, purpose. We where, were late. Where was, where was the wedding? Uh, in Borough Park, in a synagogue. I don't remember it. So I doubt that Mordenstern performed it. The next okay. time we talked a lot to Elka. You know, uh, just to backtrack a little, earlier um, Artie and Laura and I were talking about Grandma's friends, uh, the Morgensterns, and Nat and Kate Newton. And, you know, those, those were friendships that they had had for many, many years. Yeah. And Frida and Abe. Well, Frida was Grandma's friend when they were teenagers. Alyssa, any things that you might wonder about what, what things were like in the olden days? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. You want to list all your different arts and crafts projects that you've done over the years? Yeah, well, that's, that's a good, interesting thing. You have been involved in a lot of different crafts things. You want to talk about some of your, your projects over the years? I know you just did decoupage and crocheting and knitting and stuff. Eggshell art. Eggshell mosaics. Forgot about that. Yeah, those were crafts that I did. Are you still? What are you still? Are you still crocheting or knitting? Yeah. I haven't done any decoupage for a while. No. <laughs> and and the crocheting and the knitting that you're doing, oftentimes you're. Um, creating hats and different items to, um, to give 
to different organizations? Yeah, for the infant hats. There's a group um, in Scotia, which is a, a village across the river. It's in Schenectady County. And uh, this woman started all this help because there were so many infants in um, foster. In what? Foster care. In foster care, thank you. Uh, due to the fact that their mothers walked out with them with just the clothes on their backs because they were trying to get away from abusive husbands. And she told me that 400 babies arrived last year. I don't know how, I don't know how long, how, peri how long a period of time that the 400 babies arrived at foster care. So they needed everything, nipples, bottles, uh, what are the, what are the pacifier, what? pacifier? Yeah, pacifiers. And so I called to find out if she wanted hats, and she said yes. So I started to make hats for the infants. And um, so that was one project. And, uh, used to make knit helmets for the Israeli soldiers. Oh yeah. my God, that, that was a long time ago, yeah. Uh, Scarves and, ha and hats, um, not ha ma like masks. Yes. With, they, masks. They wore too. them all the way down. Yeah. yeah. And there were openings for the eyes and the mouth. Um, well, I did that scheme, for scheme American masks. soldiers also for world in World War Two. I forgot about all that. Um, and I've, I've sold some of my crocheting and knitting. And, um, and now I donated one set to um, Daughters of Sarah Nursing Home. They have a gift shop there. So they, um, I'll give them some more hats. I don't know what else to tell you. The decoupage took up about three or four years, I think, that I was acting. Three or four rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and that sold a, sold a lot of that stuff. And when we were kids, you sewed our clothes. You would make reversible outfits for us with matching hats and bags. I did? Yes. I don't remember that. And just happened to have an item that Grandma <laughs> made. You know, tell, tell the camera about it, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about it. This is, um, there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Here are some of the children. <laughs> <laughs> And when Alyssa was little and I made this, she kept asking me for it. And I kept saying no because I didn't want her to play with it. <laughs> I was so worried that it would get dirty. And now I'm giving it to her. <laughs> 27. Happy 27. And maybe she'll have it for her children. Maybe. Okay. So it sat on the on a shelf in my closet all those years. <laughs> She's playing with it. <laughs> She's playing with it. Um, when talk about different organizations. Oh, I made hats for infants. I don't know how many I sent to Israel. I didn't keep track, but I did that for about twenty years. Uh, I made them for the hospitals here also, and there was something else I just remembered that I made. Now I forgot again.
the baby blankets, right? Yeah, well, I used to sell, I sold, I don't know how many Afghans through one particular um, gift shop. It was a consignment shop in, in uh, Del Mar, which is part of Albany. It's, on, it's a suburb of Albany. And um, I don't know. And that, the shop in Burnt Hills also. Right. So I forgot about that too. <laughs> but they both sold my decoupage and the Af Afghans that I made. I don't know how many I made. And she would call me to say, I'm all out of your Afghans. <laughs> so I was constantly making them and delivering them. Did you want to talk about organizations that you belong to? Well, I'm a life member of Hadassah. I'm an approximately 60-year member of my synagogue. Um, I'm a life member of Sunnyview Auxiliary. Is. What? What, yeah, what is that? A, a rehab hospital. It's, it's um, where I had my hip surgery and uh, physical therapy. No, I didn't have my surgery there, but I had it in Ellis, the surgery in Ellis Hospital, and it's they had just have a corridor to take me into Sunnyview for the rehabilitation. I don't remember. I, right now, I can't remember anything else. I think that's plenty. Yeah. Mom? Uh, well, what, what, daughters of see, Sarah. What about you? What about you? Or well, I also am a life member of Hadassah. I'm a, I'm a 47, 47 years uh, member of my synagogue. You were a Girl Scout leader, I was you? a Girl Scout leader, yes. A Cub Scout? Dan Mother. Well, that's right. <laughs> I was a 4-H leader. <laughs> what are those 4 H? And I think a Brownie leader. Yeah. Right? I think so. I don't know, lots of field so trips. Brownie was Girl Scout. What? Brownie what? was Girl Scout. Yeah. yeah. Ruth was yeah. a Girl Scout. Yeah, I was a Brownie leader and then I was a Girl Scout leader. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait. Let me let me let me start that over. Let me start that over. I want to re, re, revisit things. What what was life like during World War II in the early forties back here in the states? You said couldn't get cigarettes <laughs> and nylons and dates. And dates. <laughs> You were you were a uh, a war bride. Yes. So so you had. You but I was a warden before I became a war bride. What is that? Mean? During the blackout that we had. What did you have to do? I had to just be available in case somebody had a problem. I think I still have my my membership card. <laughs> <laughs> So what were those blackouts that were, I mean, period? Well, we were told we had to draw the blinds and shades so no light. You know, it was a little ridiculous because nobody was going to come into Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Intentionally. Especially they turn no, the lights out and they won't see us. It was because of the airplane, they didn't know who there would be air raids. They kept the uh, blinds closed because of air raid. Possible, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your family from England came over to. Yeah, they came over after the war. No. Stella. Well, they were here during the war. Then why do you think they were here? Yeah, Stella and. Um, Nancy. 
Nancy. Were there cousins from England that moved here during the war? No, just these two sisters who came with their children, and one gave birth to a child here. Because um, Liverpool was being bombed. No, it wasn't. Only London was. But their father felt that he wanted them safe, so that's what happened. So they lived in in an apartment in Rockaway, and that summer, when they moved there, I spent the summer weekends in a bungalow with a group of girls that we rented this bungalow for the summer. And uh, it was in the street, was it was Pitt's Court, and it, with, there were five, four or five bungalows in this short street. And I remembered it from when I was a child, and three or four families, some of our relatives, we rented those bungalows in that spot. I mean, I realized that after we, my friends and I rented the one that we did, and um, the other bungalows were all boys, so there were three weddings out of out of that summer, <laughs> and um, why why did I start talking about that? Because the family from England, the people from England. Came. Yeah, because so every Friday on my way to the bungalow, I would stop to visit the cousins and their children, and uh, once they invited me for dinner because they had a a guest. Uh, that um, Stella knew from Scotland. She was from Scotland. And um, he was um, a Navy officer, and his ship had been sunk, and he was saved by the Americans. So he was in, in somewhere in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. I don't, I don't really remember the details, but they, you know, they provided him with clothing, and he knew that these two women were there, in, that they were in Rockaway. So he went to visit them. I mean, they knew each other from Liverpool, mm -hmm. and um, I. I don't even rem I don't remember his name. I just met him that one time, and I don't think I have anything else to say. Well, you know, there was one other thing I've thought about just re just before about Grandma and Grandpa. We knew Grandma and Grandpa as older grandparents. What were they like when you guys were growing up? When they were younger, when they were being parents, what kind of parents were they? What was they were good parents. Well, we know they were good parents. We knew that. <laughs> but, but I mean, were they strict? Were they involved? Were they? I mean, you know, by what? I mean, what? My mother may have been strict at times, but my father never was. <laughs> I remember one year, um, Passover fell. My, my birthday usually is on or during Passover. And so one year after the last, the last night of Passover, he took me for a walk on Bay Parkway to 72nd or 73rd Street. There was a candy store and he bought me some candy because I had missed having anything for my birthday. <laughs> so it was very thoughtful of him. So did you take family trips or anything, or was that not something that people did in no, those days? We, the only trips we took would be to, to the, for the summer yeah, to the Catskills yeah. or to Rockaway. 
<clears throat> well, I don't remember going to Rockaway with. <clears throat> I remember going, staying at Aunt Becky's place. When In Rockaway. 13, when I was thirteen, I went to Rockaway. I spent about a week or so with uh, Aunt Becky. We all we were you rebellious children. <laughs> rebellious. Rebellious, or I mean, were there issues or anything growing up? What was there to rebel against the most days? <laughs> what? What was there to rebel against the most days? <laughs> Did you all get along, the three daughters? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> we had our fights, right? We had our arguments. <laughs> Yeah, when she was helping me with my homework, she told me I was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and when you helped Aunt Cena with her homework, what did you tell her? I don't remember doing that. <laughs> I remember the um, the day. Mama came home from the hospital with Cena, and you went to Mama, and you were hugging her because you had really missed her, and I was playing with the baby, the new baby. Well, because you were you were five years older than Aunt Violet, right? Four years. Four. Four. But I was nine when Cena was born. And all of a sudden, you became the middle child, yeah. and you weren't the baby anymore. Well, I don't think that bothered me. All yeah. I remember that bothered me was that she was sleeping in my crib. And it was like <laughs> 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 Any other funny stories or incidents or things that? I probably remember it after you finished. <laughs> Did you go to the movies a lot? Yes. Yeah, every Saturday morning, you were allowed Evelyn to go and to I went to the movies. What? You were allowed to go to the movies? On a Saturday? You know, I yes. always wondered about that. Did they buy the tickets before or what? They let us I go. I don't remember. They they let us go. Yeah. I remember Norman went with us. Oh, yeah, then I don't remember. I just remember the two of us. and Tom um, Mix. And, and buying candy at that um, that. Can that Store. They had a window open and everybody. Paulettes. Paulettes, yeah. And, um, and one thing I remember one day you were going to the movies with your friends and you weren't taking me. You were going to some other movie. And it was kept a secret from me, but somehow I found out <laughs> and I was devastated that you would go to the movies without taking me. And I remember crying for hours, <laughs> or what remember. seemed like hours. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, I didn't want to let you go, and Mama, you know, separated us and said, go, go, you know. And I remember crying. It was terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we finally settled that. <laughs> There's really nothing exciting that we've told you. Oh, sure. Do you remember like the first time you took a subway by yourself or? Did no, but I used to ride the subways with a, a canister they sent us from the Hebrew school. They didn't tell us to go on the subway. They gave us canisters to try to collect money for Israel. And uh, it wasn't Israel at the time, it was Palestine. And uh, I remember and riding on the subway alone when I was 14. I used to go to my Aunt Gertie's apartment. You who? Aunt Gertie. You had to ride the subway to visit her? How, do, how else did you go to visit her? I walked down the street. <laughs> no, when she moved to Ocean Parkway. Oh. So what about the uh, the the, the Sadaka for the uh, for Israel. Was there a? Well, we I went. I didn't go alone. Went with other kids, and we'd walk up and down in the subway on the, in the train. You know, shaking it so people would give us money. And so did we, they? Yeah, we did well. 
I don't know if we filled them. They were about this high, I think. And uh, whatever we whatever we found <laughs> was found money. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever we brought in. What about radio in those days, guys? Obviously, there was no television in the right. What the what my mom? What Bob Hope? Wasn't the Bob Hope? Was it like a family thing to sit around the radio and listen to yeah, programs? Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> what was it, Tuesday night? Oh, that Make I sure you remember. were in the house at 8 o'clock because Bob Hope was on. You're talking about Dean Street. Yeah. I really only remember 69th Street sitting on, um, on the benches that we had in front of this great big um, console that had, was a radio and a record player, and oh, we on would sit. Ninth Street, yeah. And we would sit in front of the front of this big piece of furniture, listening to the radio. I don't remember listening to the radio on that. I remember playing records on it. What kind of music? What? What music? Who remembers? I don't remember. Go out I remember they had a Caruso record. What? Caruso. Oh, yeah. That was Uncle Lou used to bring us records that we would never go out and buy. They were classicals. I remember listening to Let's Pretend on Saturday morning. <laughs> was that a, ch a children's show? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, they had, like, uh, fairy tales, whatever. Let's pretend. It was, uh, you never listened to Let's Pretend? No. Oh. If I, I know other people, who were my contemporaries, who used to listen to that. One was a man, he told me, that he used to listen to that. So did you all have to fight over who got to listen to their to radio, or was it a matter of... You think there was more than one station? <laughs> there what? might have been only one station. <laughs> <laughs> no, everything, everybody wanted to listen to Bob Hope on Tuesday night. That was not a... We didn't have um, such a... Fibber McGee. I never listened to that. I never See, the, I the, think I was a few too years difference. It made a big difference yeah. back when you were a teenager. Fibber McGee was a was a yeah. big thing. Yeah. yeah, it was, but I don't I don't remember it. I never remember. Well, how about Burns and Allen? Burns yeah. and Allen. Oh they, yeah, yeah. They didn't have a show. They ha they must have had a show, but I don't remember. It was I don't already. remember a show. I only remember Bob Hope. <laughs> And I was related to uh, to uh, Burns, <laughs> yeah, through ma by marriage. You want to explain how that? What? To ex explain what the connection was. Well, he was my mother-in-law's cousin, and when he came to Schenectady, Ruth meant to went with her father to meet him backstage. I thought that you went to see him in California. I, I did. I have done that. And then later when he was playing in Schenectady, I took my dad. And you did get to go see him? He did get to go wow. see him. Yeah. Did he remember you? No. No. <laughs> and not only that, but when I explained how we were related, um, he said, oh, and how is so-and-so? And I said, well, he hasn't been with us for like 20 or 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice because then when my dad, yeah, when my dad came in, he was, um, he was able to make a lot of connections for, you know, relatives that they had both known. So nice. Very gracious of him. Yeah. So did you go roller skating, ice yeah, skating? Yeah, I was, I I I used to go roller skating, and I told you about the bike riding. When I was 15, I learned to ride a bike. Because in those days, roller skates weren't complete shoes. What were no. roller skates like in those days? Well, you oh, put, they, they were all metal. clamps that you clamped on to. You had a skate key and the strap across the ankle. 
and the, the clamps around, across the toes. Yeah. And that's what you needed the key for. Right. We had the same ones when we were young. Yeah. And, um, and I too used to ride a bike um, from 30 Ocean Parkway, which is practically the end or the beginning of Ocean Parkway, all the way up to, um, to the end of the parkway near the Seven Coney miles. Island Hospital. That was several was, miles. Hmm? Several miles? I think it was three miles. And sometimes my friend Alice, I don't know if you remember Alice Goldner, she lived in the same building as Aunt Gertie. Mm -hmm. And um, so she would, we would go together and we'd pay a quarter an hour for the bikes. And then we'd go ring Aunt Gertie's bell and she'd invite us up and give us milk and cookies. <laughs> Cookies. We didn't talk about Grandma and her cookies. Grandma's <laughs> cooking. And yeah. once she invited me for lunch, she had some fri I don't know whether they had been playing bridge, and she had these women at the same table. And she served everybody, whatever she was serving. And one of the women said, Gert, is this shrimp? And Aunt Gertie said, yes, she said, I'm allergic to it, I can't eat it. And I just pushed it away. <laughs> we'll talk about Grandma's, Grandma's cooking. cooking. Yeah. Did you enjoy your mother's cooking? Did I was not a big eater in those days. I enjoyed it, whatever she made. I'm sure I enjoyed it, but you know, yeah, we food were. was not a big thing for me. We I were very, big eaters. I was very skinny. They, she used to force me to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, she would sit me on the chair and feed me cereal. And she'd have her knee and, so that I couldn't get up from the seat. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Barely. the first time I went away to a hotel in the mountains with my friends. They served oatmeal in the morning and I ordered the oatmeal. For some reason I ordered the oatmeal and I and I ate it and I loved it. <laughs> All those years that she was forcing me to eat. <laughs> and I go away on my own. <laughs> you know, oatmeal. It's one of those moments when you realize your parents are a lot smarter than you gave them credit for. And grandma's chocolate chip cookies which were known um, even across the ocean. That's right, her Toll House cookies, did she make those? Was yep. that a thing all growing up? Did she do that forever? Oh, yeah. And Gertie wanted to put her in business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was, she said, if you make lots of them, I'll sell them for you. <laughs> <laughs> and the apple pie, I always remember the apple pie that she made. I don't know if that was an old stand or two or... No. But remember the cookies, she used to package them up and send them to us, and she would package them up in the uh, cornflakes In box. cereal boxes, yes, that's right. That's how I got them, too. She would use, you know, the, uh, the wax paper mm -hmm. that was in the cereal boxes, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and when I was in Israel, I went into a hotel where she told me to go and visit some friends who were staying there, and this oh, you're Yenis! Yenis' granddaughter, she makes the best chocolate chip cookies! <laughs> Oh, who was that? I, I don't remember who it was. That's funny. I guess Grandma's cookies are a good note to end on. Yeah, <laughs> very sweet. And she would tell them what the secret ingredient was? Orange juice? You got it. There you go. <laughs> That was the secret ingredient in the crust. In the crust on the uh, for the apple pie also, that was the secret. How did you know that? Because she gave me the recipe. Actually, uh -huh. I take that back. She gave Lynn the recipe. Lynn gave me the recipe. But Dee Dee actually does a remarkable job on the cookies, but she gets real close. <laughs> the cookies, I, I, the way I found out was because I watched her making them one day. And I was trying, she wasn't measuring. <laughs> so it was a problem. <laughs> Then I saw the orange juice. And she used to make special batches for me with the raisins in them because I like Special the ones for Lynn without, without the nuts? Well, no, 
Linden, there was something Linden. Was no, it I don't think she put much no. in them. If it had sugar in it, Linden would like it. <laughs> but, but she put orange juice in the batter? Oh. News to her. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they were a little crispier than that. It's sweet. Special sweet. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you.